I'm Chris Parnell. I'm Amber Nash. I'm Lucky Yates. All right, so my first question is thinking back, you know, all the way to the start of the show, what was it about Archer that really attracted you guys to be working on it? Hmm. Well, for me, one, it was a job. So I was like, yes, I'll do it. Yeah. Um, and then I was like, uh-oh, this is awesome. Like, I think about halfway into the first season, or like maybe after the, because Pam wasn't much of a character in the first episode. She was just kind of like a punching bag. But then once the show kind of started to develop, I was like, man, this is a great show. Yeah, I mean, really, it was just, it was a job. And it was well-written. So that was, you know, I was like, oh, yeah, this this is good. This is good. And uh, it's, you know. It's, it's a job, and it actually paid all right, and um, so yeah, it was, and then, then as we went along, it, it was clear that a lot of people really liked it. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, Matt Thompson and Adam Reed are good friends of Amber and I, because we all live here, uh, and we've been doing shows with them for a long time, so the chance to work with your pals again is always a great thing, uh, but then when the show is so fun and smart, so smart and so funny, um, and then playing a mad scientist, uh, it just, it was really a dream come true. It's amazing, yeah. Um, so as the show has gone on, it has evolved significantly, now jumping into genre and theme seasons. Uh, can you talk about how that affected the way you looked at your character, and maybe even if it made you act any different mm. while you were voicing them? Uh, this season's got the biggest change for probably all three of us, right? Yeah, well, last season was a big one for, for Poovy. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was, that's true. That was a gender-neutral character. Yeah. It was but, based on Russell Crowe's character from L.A. Confidential. <laughs> <laughs> but now you're like eight feet tall or yeah. something. You're yeah. gigantic. Yeah, I think it's fun. I mean, like I, when I was preparing for last season for Dreamland, um, I watched L.A. Confidential again because they literally said it's based on Russell Crowe's character. Um, and... Then I went I in. Yeah, isn't that great? And then I went in and I was like, uh, do you guys want me to sound any different? Or, you know, they're like, nope, it's the same voice, like the same thing. So it's it, it it's all kind of in there, um, but I don't think it's really changed the way that I deliver my lines at all. But you guys have had to speak in different languages. Yeah, I only had one script where I had to go heavily German, but you're German all over the place this season. Yeah, I'm totally German. Yeah, how is that going? Uh, did you have to learn the language? We're well, just going to jump into a side conversation here. <laughs> That's well, fine. you know, it's, I, I, I had learned a little bit of German before for a trip I took yeah. a long time ago, but um, it's mostly just Google Translate. Yeah, you know? yeah, exactly. And I just listen to how the machine pronounces it, you know. That's what you, a computer's a machine, right? <laughs> I believe I listen to so. The computer I, I machine. Think gears aren't involved anymore, no. but once were. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, sure. I'm really old. So. Yeah, as am I. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this season I play a bird, so that's awesome. That was your second dream job, a mad scientist and a bird. A bird named Crackers, which was my bird when I was three years old, yes. And also your nickname growing up. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> here and only here in the South. <laughs> Um, so going off of those themed and genre seasons, we're curious if there is anything that you guys might want to see in the future. Oh. Oh, yes. So much. Uh, I want to see. S- I want to see seasons eleven through twenty. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I want exactly. to see. I want to see Adam decide. <laughs> <laughs> we could just kidnap him, put him in a room, <laughs> and lock him to a typewriter. Oh. Like we're gonna do a typewriter because it's a machine. It's like a milking machine for a cow, but it's a writing machine that he's like attached to. <laughs> so you put those other things on his fingers yeah, and, just and it just milks words. the words right out yeah, of him. Good. Sorry. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> no, that's a good answer. <laughs> it's easier just to attach it to his brain. Yeah, okay. Than like yeah. Thinking. Yeah. Right. yeah. Get one of those black <laughs> mirror <laughs> things that head. they stick on everybody's temple. Yeah. I don't know. It's 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 uh, I mean, I'm sure we'll go someplace interesting next season too and uh, I, I think Adam's given us some idea of what it is, but I don't I don't want to I don't want to spoil it. Um, mm-hmm. And I, you know, it's it's fun because your character is a little different every season, these last few anyway, and so you, you get to explore different parts of, of that character, or, or it's, in, in my case, it's like almost a completely different person, really. So. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Just to confirm, Adam told you that we're bees. We're bees next season, right? Oh, no. oh, damn it. Right? I'm lucky. I just wanted to make sure like we're all getting the same story. We that don't we're gonna do be that bees. on camera during the middle of a goddamn but, interview. But we're going to be bees. I'm excited. I'm lucky. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I kind of like I'm using, I'm flying already this season. I'm like, oh, I can translate that into bees. Okay, okay, it's it. different. I have to change it. Now. I mean, is he? So what? So we're wasps. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> I'm sorry. 
Um, and for my final question, I just wanted to um, see if I could get y'all's your advice to um, SCAD students that are interested in voice acting and acting in general, how they should break into the industry or maybe follow in your footsteps. Oh mm. boy, there's so many ways. My thing I always say, and this is what I did in the beginning for me, is that I worked for free a lot and I wasn't afraid to do that because that's how you get experience and that was how I was able to build a reel that, so people could hear what my voice sounded like and do student stuff and do radio stuff where you can and just get as much experience as you can on a microphone. That's what I did. And also improv classes I think are so valuable yeah, for any it actor. really is. So, I mean, the three of us have improv backgrounds, but I, I Chris and I both studied theater, uh, and then when I found improv, I found it uh, so much more useful than your typical acting class, just mm -hmm. because it really taught you not only stagecraft, but also being able to handle things that come up during shows like people going up or whatever. Right. Uh, if you have an improv background, man, it really helps so much across the board. It does, but I, I also would say, you know, acting, you know, study acting too because you know if you're gonna if you're gonna do animation you know you're gonna need to act on some level so the better you can act the better you'll do in that field mm -hmm. yeah it's uh it's a tough field anyway for jobs uh and so yeah don't focus on like so many people say i want to be a voice actor but yeah just take any job like you really just act yeah do uh, as much as you do everything you can really mm -hmm. yeah you know like everything Amber was saying, and Lucky, and, and you know, do student films and, and workshops and classes, and uh, yeah, I mean, because that's what that's what people that's the advice I got from people when I moved to LA, and and so I did, I did all of that, and, and it, it really made all the difference. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much, and we're so happy to have you guys thank here. Thank you. Nice to be here.